Red Bull was a company that sells energy drinks. Now it's a marketing company and in the near future it will become a sports and technology company. Here's why. Last year they sold 11.6 billion cans. That's one and a half cans of an unhealthy drink for every person on the globe. But besides that, they own two Formula One teams, a NASCAR team, one ice hockey team, four football clubs, a clothing line, an esports team, host famous events like Wings for Life, tons of music festivals. Oh, and not to mention thousands of athletes that Red Bull sponsors in almost every sport. Their business model is unique. I will show you how they managed to build all that and why they are not an energy drink company, but rather than a marketing company shifting towards being a sports and technology company. It all started in summer of 1982, when a toothpaste salesman, Dieter Schmatterschitz, went on a business trip in Thailand and suffered from jet lag. To ease the jet lag, he tasted a local drink called Creating Deng. When translated, Creating Deng means red gore. Gore is a huge bison located in Asia. So yeah, it basically means Red Bull. There was nothing like that drink in Europe. There was no market. So Matashits went to create one. That looks good when there is no market. You can create one. But the investors didn't actually like the idea. They didn't believe that the product could make it outside of Asia. So Matashits and the owner of Creating Denk invested each 500,000 euros. Each got 49% of the company and the remaining 2% went to the Creating Denk owner's son. 1987, Austria. Red Bull was launched. In the first year, they sold over 1 million cans. Next year, 2 million. They spread it quickly across Europe like that 2019 thing. And in 1997, entering the US market, they sold over 1 million cans per day. They charge more than the competitors. A lot more. It costs 9 cents to make a can of Red Bull. And the average retail price is $1.79. Red Bull puts its product in cans to make it look like a premium product. And for it to be a premium product, it needs a premium price. Very risky move, but later crucial for the company's success. They didn't have big budget for marketing and they didn't have a market. To start the market, they put their focus on the club scene. They hired students to host parties at different locations and supplied the party with Red Bull. Volkswagen Beetle with the Red Bull can was a hit. You could see it everywhere offering free sample and it still does. I remember seeing the Beetle a few times but I didn't get a free sample. Maybe they hate me. Near clubs in London, they would fill trash cans with empty Red Bull cans, leading people to believe that Red Bull is a popular drink. The Red Bull Girls Influencer Marketing 1.0. Their job was to give Red Bull to college party goers. I would refuse a drink from a beautiful girl. Red Bull has a deeper way of engaging with their customers because of sport teams ownership and sponsorships. Think about it. You drink the same drink that has logo on a Formula One car, a football club jersey, and a record-breaking jump. Felix in 2012 jumped from space with a Red Bull logo showing everywhere. Now imagine 120 million people seeing your logo. That thing costed Red Bull over 50 million dollars and it took them years to prepare for the jump. All that work just to sell a drink, but the sales went up by 13% after the jump. That's risky and it's super risky when the same energy drink causes obesity, insomnia, diabetes and other bad stuff. So that's why they are attempting to diversify, to create additional businesses next to the energy drink business. Let's take a look at football clubs. They have four football clubs. There is a talented player that plays for one of their clubs. Red Bull can train him and sell it to other clubs for a massive profit. Or one player can play his whole career in Red Bull. He can maybe start in Red Bull Salzburg, then go to Red Bull Bragantino in Brazil, then go to Red Bull Leipzig and end his career in New York Red Bulls. Speaking of New York Red Bulls, in 2006, Red Bull bought the club for $20 million. Now it's worth $800 million. Don't forget, US football, or as they call it their soccer, is a rising market, and that club will be worth much, much, much more in the future. Teams give the brand exposure to millions. The F1 team were there just to boost the sales of the drink. Now it's different. The exposure they get in F1 is worth 320 million each year and it only costs them 160 million. Red Bull gets only 10 million in profit from sponsorship. But Red Bull F1 team has been F1 champions for the last two years 
and for years one of the best teams on the grid. They lost their engine supplier, Honda. So Red Bull decided to invest in creating their own engine for F1. They want to be an engine manufacturer, just like Ferrari, Mercedes and others. That costs millions. Red Bull wants its F1 team to become a business for itself. And who knows where they will go from there. Red Bull teams are the kings of promotion. Media mentions them all the time and mentions between sports fans give them a huge promotion. Also, fans create content for their favorite sports team. And if their favorite sports team is Red Red Bull, that's free promotion, baby. Still, the main guy in the Red Bull family is the energy drink that represents more than 95% of all revenue for a company that is worth 16.96 billion euros. Red Bull says that the activities we mentioned in the video are ongoing brand investments. They are still not in profit, but in a loss. But these investments are smart and they are in a growing market. I don't seem to think of a way how this could fail. Red Bull can only go up and be a totally different company in the future. A sports and technology company. If you like this video, you should check out this video about a company that is worth $700 million, is just a few years on the market and sells water. We break down how they did it and what an amazing business model they have that you probably never heard of. I gave you my word that it's entertaining and educational. Bye!